Hello and welcome to you all. Welcome to Scribe. I hope you can hear me. So just a quick little tech check then. Please, can you either type your name in the chat, um, either your name or let me know where you're zooming in from so that we can just see which hopefully sunny part of the country you're in and also check that you can see and hear me as well. Lovely, I've got some chats coming up already. Morning Yvonne, nice to see you. Nice to see a few familiar faces there as well. So hello Anne and Christina, Teresa. Oh my gosh, we've got lots flying in now. Wonderful, that's fantastic. So well, I'm sure many of you are gonna be familiar with Zoom for council meetings. We've got about 130 people registered today. You'll have automatically come in on mute. I would ask you please, if you could keep your microphone muted during the presentation, just to avoid any background noise. After the presentation today, we will have a question and answer session. If you do have any questions, please do raise your hand. That's not physically, um, you can do that at the bottom of the screen. You should have a little reactions box or something somewhere. And then there's just a little button there that uh, allows you to raise your hand. So the more questions you have, the better, because the more everybody will learn. As we say, no question is too easy and we can even manage some of the tricky ones. There is something that we can't answer. We will obviously find that answer and we'll come back to you at a later date. So otherwise, as I said, if you just want to pop your questions in the chat console, then we can obviously get started. So to introduce ourselves, my name is Tracy and I'm one of the support team here at Scribe. Some of you may already use Scribe or you may have heard of us, but just to give you a brief introduction, Scribe is a software company. We currently work with over 700 town and parish councils across England and Wales. And our mission is to make local communities better through the modernizing of local systems. Our core product is Scribe Accounts, and this is a cloud account management software. We also have cemetery management software and new for 2021 is Scribe Bookings and that's for managing bookings and payments of your facilities. Scribe is based in the usually sunny North Norfolk by the sea, although some of us are still working from home. We are a small team, but we do work hard and are ever growing our products with the users in mind. I'd also like to introduce you today to Hannah Driver. Hello. Hannah is our senior accountant. She's very knowledgeable in all things to do with local authority accounting, and she is going to be delivering the presentation shortly. So budgeting and forecasting, we do know that this can be complicated, but hopefully the steps that Hannah will explain today will show you that it can actually be quite simple. And the idea of the session today is to give you as much information as possible, and then to follow on with that opportunity to ask Hannah as many questions as you want. So do save your questions and give some thought into anything that you would like to ask. As before, the more questions, the better, the more you'll learn and we'll do our best to cover it all. I will also mention the Council Clerks Facebook group, which I'll add a link in the chat to. It's another place where clerks all share their knowledge and advice. And if you have any questions, they're a brilliant resource. So do take a look at it. OK, then over to you, Hannah. Lovely. Thanks, Tracy. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome this morning. I hope you're all well. It was interesting weather this morning. It was absolutely so dark and, and rainy here this morning, but now it's sunny. So a little bit lower than light than I was expecting initially. So I'm just going to share my screen then and then we can get started with everything here. So here we go. That's better. So there we go. <clears throat> so as Tracy said then, all about budgeting and forecasting today. Quick note as we started, I saw there was lots of people with name I recognised who are Scribe customers. So welcome to you all. Nice to see you um, here today. But just to note that this session today is non-Scribe specific. It's intended for anybody who wants to get a bit more of a feel for some of the budgeting terminology, some things to think about, the processes that you can use to do the budget. But it's not a session on how to use Scribe specifically for budgeting and forecasting. I'll show you a little bit of that very briefly at the end, just sort of two or three minutes about how that might work. But if you are a Scribe customer and you want to log in and register for a session on budgeting and forecasting, we do do separate ones. They're available on the Scribe Academy section of our website that you can sign up for. And today is just a general session. So whether you're a Scribe customer or not, I hope you find something from it. And as Tracy said, do ask any questions at the end as well. And I'll do my best to answer them. OK, then, so the first thing I want to look at, obviously, to start with is what is budgeting? So as I said, this session is intended for those of you who may 
have not really done a council budget before, you're not very financially minded, you're not very confident in it, you don't really like it maybe, or just simply because this is something that is only done once a year, it's easy to sort of forget the processes, the things to be mindful of when you're doing, doing it, and it's good to come and have a bit of a refresher. So budget, as it says there, is a financial plan for a specific period of time, most often a year. So if you're talking in terms of a commercial business or a council, then yes, a, a budget would be most likely for a year. But for those of you who are thinking, oh, I've never done a budget before, I know nothing about budgeting. Actually, everyone probably has. If nothing more simple than just thinking at home about, can I afford to go on holiday next year? Can I go out this weekend? Can I buy that pair of shoes I saw in that fancy shop at the weekend? Because you're gonna be thinking about the income that you've got, what you need to spend, what you want to spend, prioritizing your electricity bill over the new shoes, et cetera. But all those sorts of thought processes is in essence a budget and the things that you need to think about when you're creating one. So parish councils, regardless of their size, have a statutory duty to prepare an annual budget. So obviously you've got to go through this process to have that budget in place and to set that preset. <coughs> and you need to prepare and approve it before the new financial year. So we need to do that now in order that the budget is ready for April, but that you're also then ready to have that preset amount that you can then submit to your billing authority so you can get that amount in. And as I've noticed, noted at the bottom as well, all members of the council should understand the budget. So I think that's also an important element to consider. So depending on the size of your council and the sort of departments and committees that might be working within it, some of your council members will be more involved in the budget than others, but it's important for everybody to understand not only your specific budget, but also actually the importance of it and why it's really key to have a good budget and to follow it and to monitor it. And that's an important thing that hopefully you will be doing as you go through the financial year and looking at the budget on a monthly basis. And that's something that you consider. That's the theme also that I want to get across through today's session that ultimately you need to set a budget in order to get the precept, but don't see that as a one off you know, unrelated to anything else, that actually the whole budgeting process is a continuous process. And if you monitor it, then it helps you with the decision making and understanding the budget. And then it helps next year when you've got a better understanding of the budget going forward. And that's an important thing to keep going with. Okay. So why is it important? Obviously, we need to get that precept amount. That's the key here. But it also allows you to think about future projects. It allows you to think about what the actual spend is throughout the financial year, the income that you're getting. If you've got a good budget, then that really does help you with your decision making and things to consider. And also it will flag up potential under or overspend. So if you've got an issue with your budget, some element of it's wrong, or you're going to overspend in an area, then you can take corrective action if you need to. And that's why another reason why it's so important. OK, so the budgeting timetable, then this is just a really brief <laughs> Excuse me, I've got a terrible cough still that I've had in my cold about three weeks that I just can't shift, so do apologise for that. So the budgeting timetable, this is just a rough guide because it's all very likely that you'll have your own timetable with your own meetings set when you're and for when they are in the timetable. But generally, this is sort of roughly when it's going to take place and the order in which it's going to happen. So at the moment, you're likely to be working on the draft budget if you've got different departments or committees looking at that, or if it's just you and a smaller council, then you'll be putting those different elements together with a view to getting the full draft budget in November. And then December, you'll be able to present the full budget at the council meeting. Um, you may have reviewed the budget prior to that meeting or within that meeting itself, with the goal of the preset being agreed and submitted to your billing authority in January. I think that can go up to March, but most like it in January. So roughly, this is the kind of process that you'll be working through at the moment in order to achieve that. So the budgeting approach is then, <coughs> excuse me, I don't want to get too bogged down in too much terminology but I think it helps a little bit if we understand some of the budgeting approaches and some of the things to think about but if you knew nothing of budgeting at all and you picked up a budgeting textbook then it's very likely that not only would there be quite a lot of phrases terminologies to be aware of it is also very likely that you probably be presented with a manufacturing example you'd have a factory where they have fixed cost variable costs and they'd be making units production with raw materials etc so I want to kind of strip that back to the relevant elements to us because one, obviously, you're not manufacturing anything and that doesn't really fit with the examples that you're likely to see. And two is a lot of the time, if you had a budget as a commercial business and you ended the financial year and you were under budget, that would be fantastic because you'd be in a situation where your profit was greater than you expected. 
but from a council really your goal is to actually map a line to the budget because that's what you want to achieve in terms of if you're overspent then maybe you didn't ask for and haven't taken off precept but on the other side if you actually ended up with a budget surplus is it because you didn't provide all the services you should have done or was the precept too great and that's something that you don't want to have and that's sort of different to generally the commercial and budgeting approaches that might be taken so a couple i want to talk about then firstly is incremental budgeting which is the traditional method of budgeting, budgeting, sorry, where you add on a percentage or an incremental amount. So you'd have your budget currently as you've got it and you base it on your current year's forecast, which we'll talk about in a moment about how to forecast. You'd have what's happening already and you'd add on a percentage or incremental amount. That's fairly straightforward because at the very top level, you could simply take your budget and add on 2%, 3% and you'd have a budget. Obviously, it's not really um, gone in an in-depth analysis there, but you would have a budget of sorts. Now, ideally, you'd be thinking about the lines or the departments or the areas in more detail than that. But in principle, if your current budget is pretty good and pretty aligned with what actually is happening, then it's a good starting place to use it. You don't have to sort of reinvent the wheel. You've, you've got something that you can work with and go from that. OK, the flip side of that is zero based budgeting because that starts from scratch, doesn't consider anything that's happened before. You've literally, if you did have a budget, you'd throw it away, blank piece of paper, start again. Now, most of the time, I don't think that you probably need to do that. And that would be a bit of an extreme reaction to budgeting, because if you have got a good budget, then most of the time you are gonna just add on a little bit extra. Or you're gonna know certain things that you need to change or consider when you're doing it. But zero-based budgeting can be good, because it might be that some elements of your budget is useful to use zero based budgeting. So if you've got a one off project special item that you're doing, maybe you're going to install a play park and it would require zero based budgeting because you've got nothing to base on that you've done previously, because you are going to have to go away and work out how much it's going to cost to prepare the area, to buy the actual equipment, to install it, the ongoing maintenance, etc. And all those things are building up the budget which is what zero based budgeting basically is. Also, if you do find yourself in a situation where the budget that you've currently got is actually really not very good, you may find it necessary to use zero based budgeting. If you've got a budget and actually you can already see that the actuals versus the budget aren't really in line, it's not very useful, you're trying to monitor what's going on, but actually the budgets really don't fit with what you're spending or maybe your cash book even isn't based on that budget and there's no alignment there, then maybe you do need to start again. You need to bite the bullet and say, yes, we need to look at this. It needs to go back to basics from nothing. We're going to build it back up again because incremental budgeting is good, but only if the current budget that you're basing upon is also good and actually accurate. If it isn't, then it may be necessary to start again, or it might be necessary for certain elements or departments to start again, particularly if things have changed a lot. If what you had previously was budgeted based on certain services or things you provided and that's changed quite a lot but the budget really hasn't in line with that then that's something to consider okay. so now then I want to talk a little bit about forecasting so if you're going to use incremental budgeting you need a forecast because you need to forecast the current financial year itself okay so forecasting is predicting the future income and expenditure create a final year position in this example, I'm talking about to assist in budgeting. You can use forecasting for other elements, but in this scenario, we want to forecast the remainder of this financial year in order that we can see what our final year position will be and how it is in line against the budget. How does it look against what's going to happen if we expect what we expect to happen happens? How is it going to be in line with the budget? And therefore, we can look at next year's budget and what we might need to change or consider how things, how things are now different. OK, I think it's important also to say that forecasting is based on assumptions and estimates in the same way that budgeting is. You're never going to get it exactly right. And that's fine. That's not going to be perfect. Some elements are easier to forecast for than others in the same way for budgeting. Some lines are going to be easier than others to forecast and to budget for. But you need to go away and think about what have we still got to spend? What do I know we're going to need to spend? And forecasting is different in terms of budgeting because budgeting is more about what do I need to spend? What do I want to spend? Whereas forecasting is what is actually going to happen. I know we're committed to doing this. This is broken, so we've got to fix this. We've got to do that. That's going to happen. So you've got that 
specific final year position based on what you expect to happen. And then once you've got that forecast, you can then use it in conjunction with other historic data or other information, especially if the current year is non-typical. So if you've been affected by COVID and you hire out your hall and it hasn't hired out as well as it would have done previously because obviously due to lockdowns, etc., you may need to go back. You may have your current year forecast, but you may have the prior, prior financial year. You may have some other information, some of the information you'll have that's set that you already know about. And you can use all that in conjunction to start thinking about that budget. Also be aware that forecasting is used for budgeting, but you can also use it to manage spending. So once you've created a forecast for the current financial year, you might want to continue to use it. So in this scenario, we'd forecast to get our final year position in order to think about next year's budget. But once we've done that, we might want to continue to forecast to understand what we expect our final year position to be in terms of the current budget. Does it look like we're actually going to be overspent? Do we therefore need to think about corrective action? Do we need to draw down from reserves? Do we need to change what we're planning to spend? Et cetera, et cetera. And forecasting can be quite useful, particularly if at this point you find yourself maybe quite a long way from your budget that you've currently got, maybe because of unforeseen circumstances or maybe because the budget isn't very good, it actually might be really helpful to forecast for the remaining months of the year to give you a clearer picture of what you actually expect to happen. Okay. So how do I forecast? So the half year point at the moment, we're obviously in October. So we've got April to September, first six months of the year. It's a good place to start, but you can do it from any month end. Generally, I wouldn't forecast anything in another complete month. So it's a bit too much detail there. And in the same way as you could take the budget and simply add on the 3% or whatever it may be. With the forecast, you could simply take your first six months, double it, and then you've got a, a forecast for a whole financial year. Now, some of the lines in your forecast, that might be perfect. If your staff costs, your phone costs are static and the same each month, that's fine. But obviously, in the same way that some of your budgeting things you're going to need to think about, some of your forecasting lines you're also going to need to think about and give a little bit more detail to that. So it's important to predict those remaining months income and expenditure per your budget line. And as I said, again, some are going to be easier to forecast for than others. And then once you've got that budget, you then be at that sort of forecast, sorry, you then be analysing it against the budget. So this next slide here, hopefully you can see all that OK. <coughs> Excuse me. This is an extract of a forecasting sheet that I created a couple of years ago that we gave um, out to some of our customers and the other users that they, they make use of here to kind of understand about how you might look to do a forecast. So on the far left over there, I've got my codes sectioned off into different areas. So I've got my admin codes, my ground maintenance codes, my allotment codes. I've got my current budget, so my 21, 22 year budget there. And I've got one column for my actual cost. So, so far I know what I've spent for April to September, and then I'm gonna forecast for the remaining months of the year. Now I've split that down to October, November, December, January, February, March, individual months. Because in many ways, if you're forecasting, it's easier to see individual months that you're forecasting for. But if you are a smaller council or you haven't got that much going on where there's many fluctuations in what you spend, you may find it perfectly adequate to simply forecast as one column. Okay, But generally, if you can, I'd recommend doing it like that, particularly if you then want to continue to use this forecasting going forward. So, for example, once you've got through October and that's, you've got an actual amount you can replace October with your actual figures update November to March for anything changes that you might know now know is going to happen and you've got an ongoing forecasting sheet that you can use um, for the end of year position what you'll see we then get is the total for 21 22 so our actual figures plus our forecast and therefore we've got a variance and that's what we're going to be analyzing against the budget to understand where do we need to think about changing the budget, what things do we need to be mindful of. The far right hand side is what I'll talk about in a bit more detail, but that's ultimately what the forecast is there to do in order to allow us to propose the budget for the new financial year, which you can see I've done and I've also added some comments as to why I'm thinking about those certain changes with regards to the budget. So that's roughly how, you, how you'd forecast, but the principle is there in terms of estimating what you think is going to happen for the remaining months in order that you've got that final year position to compare against the budget. Okay. So then the budget process itself. So once you've got that information there, we've, so as we say, we've got the current year forecast and other relevant data. So that might be the prior year. It might be other information that we've got 
where certain scenarios we know exactly what we're going to be spending against certain budget lines so we can use that information and then we're going to consider the following elements so expenditure first because that's more than likely going to be the largest element of your budget so the expenditure bit is the important part but we also need to consider what other income that you might receive at your council contingencies and also any reserves or projects that you are working on planning to do want to save for etc I've also put a note at the bottom about being mindful of the level of detail and material materiality sorry when doing your budget so just about being giving thought to what you're doing so as I said before some of your budget lines are going to need a lot more work than others some are going to be really straightforward because you're simply going to know what the spend is for that one or they're going to be fairly static and easy to budget for some of them are going to be a lot harder to do that but you need to also consider the size of that budget line and the proportion that it's taking of the total budget so for example it might be harder to budget for stationary because you don't know exactly what you're going to spend when but it's going to be a pretty small proportion of your budget so don't get bogged down in the minute detail of your stationary you know, how many paper clips i'm only going to use in june for example because it's quite insignificant and it's very small but other areas where you're going to be spending a lot on a budget line that might be harder to budget for then obviously it's going to take longer and that's absolutely fine that it won't be a clear set process some of them are easy to do and some of them are going to be a lot harder and going to be based on your best guesses and assumptions so we'll talk about that a little more as we go through the different processes so firstly then expenditure so back to some of the terminology again though but fairly standard that you'll probably be aware of already so firstly then fixed costs possibly <coughs> excuse me indirect costs or overheads and these are costs that are unlikely to change so fairly fixed such as your phone bill that is an amount so an amount each month your staff cost your salary so change and they're fairly easy to budget for because these are fixed things fairly they have a fixed element about them but therefore quite easy to go through the process of budget for budgeting for some of them you will even know so if you're tied into an insurance renewal deal you may know already what your insurance cost is for next year and you can simply add that against the line subscriptions you may know for example and others can have a percentage uplift applied you'll add a bit more onto your phone bill for whatever it may be and they're fairly easy to deal with and a lot of the time are probably quite a large proportion of your council budget these sort of core costs that are fairly fixed that are easy to deal with then the other side of that you've got to think about your reactive costs your variable costs so these are the ones that are harder to predict <coughs> excuse me such as maintenance where you haven't got a set amount that you're going to be spending because you simply don't know what's going to happen and this is where you then need to start thinking about what do i know may be involved in this what are, i do need to mean my assumptions so in terms of maintenance you know, how old is the item that where the maintenance relates to? Has it been replaced, repaired recently? What have we spent previously on it? So for example, if it's your village hall maintenance cost, but last year you replaced the boiler, you may find that you're going to put the budget down this year because actually you've replaced the boiler and that was a lot of the maintenance cost previously. And now that's not going to cost you like it was. So it's just about thinking about what's happened previously, what may impact on that line going forward. It may also be related to the level of activity to do with income. So you may have instances where budget lines are related to one another. So if you're going to look at increasing your budgeted income from your hall hire, given that now COVID, hopefully we can hire it out again. Other elements then may go up. So if you hire out your hall more, you may now find that actually your cleaning costs are going to go up or your associated heating and lighting costs, you're going to put up a bit higher on the budget, or you may need to pay your caretaker more because they're going to be needing to unlock and relock the hall once it's been used, etc. So think about those things that have a relationship and also about what that you're going to put them to be. So if you do want to start pushing your hall higher and increase it, then obviously you need to um, increase some of the co associated costs as well. But generally, this will be a smaller proportion of the overall budget for your council. So these are the ones that will take more time to look at, but generally will be a smaller proportion because a lot of what you're doing is going to be those sort of more fixed cost elements that you're going to be able to be quite clear cut on the service and things that you're providing have, have got a, a, a specific amount associated with them. Okay. So then we can think about income 
And again, you're going to have some, you may have some guaranteed income. You may be a councillor that actually doesn't really have any other income other than the preset. You might get a little bit of bank interest and a few sort of old sundry donations, et cetera. And in that instance, that's not going to be particularly relevant here. You're going to be literally looking to match your expenditure budget off against what you're going to take in terms of the preset. But if you are a councillor that takes other income, then you do need to consider that. So you may have some guaranteed income. So if you rent out a property on an annual basis and you receive a monthly income for that, then that's going to be again fairly fixed and you're going to know what that is and you're going to get a grant at a certain point and again you know what that is it's fairly specific amounts that you can easily put into the budget but you may have other income sources as well that are more variable that again you need to think about so are they likely to continue and what's the impact of covid so in terms of your haul hire that might be that you're now hoping that to increase greatly because people are now allowed to go out and hire the hall and have um, functions etc but it might be that if you've got a car park, actually, do you think it might go down? Because of last year's, if you've got a council in a lovely um, beachside town or village, then maybe you saw your car parking go through the roof because everybody was going on holiday. And actually, you might think it might return to normal levels again. So you've got to think about those um, sorts of things. But also as well, if you're going to increase any rates or fees. So, for example, the cemetery fees are going up, then things such as the cemetery, obviously, you're not going to know exactly what's going to be. Um, income in terms of memorials burials etc but if you are increasing the rates or the fees obviously they incorporate that into your calculation based on the average number of, of those things that may be happening so some of it will be guaranteed as I said and some of it will need to estimate the income from a more uncertain sources such as your cemetery such as your hall hire etc moving on then think about contingency so this is amounts budgeted for unexpected or unplanned expenditure so there's always going to be instances or very likely to be instances where you haven't got a line or you haven't got something within the specific budget lines because you can't simply expect on every line that something might happen untoward and that's something that I would always recommend that you don't build into each individual budget line and you have a specific contingency line and amount in the budget so you can very clearly see what that is. Because if you put an amount or increase the budget line for everything very slightly, then you're going to be masking the true budget and the true costs. So you may end up in a situation where you look like you're under budget, but because you've built a contingency into it, actually you're not because you didn't spend anything unexpectedly and truly that you're overspent. So be mindful of that. Don't build fat, fat into the budget where I used to work previously. We help people coordinate budgets as one for a department. And quite often people were quite worried about being overspent on their budget. They the fact that would be a bad reflection on them if their budget wasn't right and they were overspent on it. So a lot of the time they try to build more into it to cover them. So they're less likely to go overspent and it cause a problem. But obviously if your budget isn't, actually accurate and you just put a little bit extra on to make it look good because you're not overspending it that's not really what you're trying to achieve and particularly for councils obviously you don't want to end up with a surplus in every line and then a great big issue because your precept that you've taken actually didn't need to be that great because you had all this and um, contingency line in every single line and it then makes it very clear as well so if you've got a specific contingency line if you then do need to spend something unexpected you can put it against that so not only is that very clear what you've spent it also makes it easier for future budgets that you know then that what you spent was unexpected and it's not hidden within budget lines that may then fool you into thinking you need to increase the budget greatly because you're overspent but actually it was a one-off so as it says there at the bottom beware one-off costs when reviewing the actual spend. So when you've got a situation where you've got your forecast, if you know you spent things that aren't going to be repeated, do make sure that you're aware of that. So where I was talking about the village hall and the boiler blew up, obviously if that's gone into that budget line for maintenance, then make sure that you don't simply see that as an overspend against the budget. Therefore, you need to increase the budget because obviously you're not going to um, repeat replacing the boiler, for example. So be aware of those one-off costs. Moving on then to thinking about reserves and projects. So this is obviously additional things that you want to <laughs> want to achieve. And it may be good if for zero based budgeting here, as I said at the start, if you want to install a play park and do a one off particular thing where you've got no preconceived ideas about how it might, might it might cost. It may be relevant that you may need to use zero based budgeting because you have no other way of pulling those costs together. But the things to think about, therefore, obviously, are income. So how will you fund the project? And consider what will be received so are you going to do it from grants that are being um, received are you going to build something into the budget to save up for it 
so how many years it's going to take you to do so. And also obviously think about expenditure to so all elements such as the direct cost. So going back to thinking about the play part, obviously you'll have some specific things that you need to spend such as preparing it, buying the equipment, installing it. But then there's other associated things and ongoing things such as the maintenance, the inspections, et cetera, that you also need to think about going forward as well. So things to consider then, does it straddle financial years? So, <coughs> excuse me, if it's something that you started previously and it's now finishing in its current financial year, does that therefore you need to be mindful of what that now means for the budget going forward? So if your play park's now installed, have you now got a line in your budget for maintenance, inspections, etc.? If it straddles financial years, does it work with how the time frame of when, how much we're going to take and put, it, put aside into the pot and when you want to start it? If it's a deferred project, does it need reevaluating? So if you found yourself in a scenario where you couldn't um, go ahead with the project because of COVID and it put pay to it, for example, does it need reevaluating if the cost changed? Because given that raw materials have changed quite significantly, price of wood, et cetera. So going back again to a play park example, is it actually a case that if you now went to buy what you proposed to install as your play park, that's now considerably cheaper. So do you need to defer it again, save a bit more money? Are you still going to go ahead, but with a smaller piece of equipment, you're going to put more money into it? How are you going to manage that? So be mindful of if, if things have changed. Um, and now the costs aren't any more so no longer relevant as they used to be. And then, as I said again, there, think about those ongoing costs and how how they'll be managed as well. Okay, so once you've thought about all those different elements of the budget, you can now get to the point of putting that budget together in order to see what the precept is that you need, therefore, to take and calculating what that needs to be. Okay, so in simple terms, your precept requirement will be based on your expenditure. OK, your expenditure budget and then other income expected or any prior year surplus that you had. So if you're in a situation where your council doesn't really receive any other income, your expenditure budget is likely to be the precept. We need to spend this and therefore that will be the precept. But if you're in a scenario where you have going to, you are going to receive other income or maybe that you've had a situation previously where you've ended up with a prior year surplus and you're going to now offset that against the precept that you're going to take for next year, that's something to be considered. So in very simple terms, if you've got an expenditure budget of 100,000, but you're going to income budget of 20,000, then you might need a precept of 80,000 in order to meet that demand of that expenditure. And that's something that you can then look at. Um, and depending on how much changes you've made to the budget, how different that is, and then look at how that fits with what you've had previously. Obviously, if you found it necessary to start again, go back to zero-based budgeting, because your previous budget wasn't fit for purpose, you may find it's quite different to what you previously calculated. So obviously you can check your calculation based on your bandy equivalent properties. So you'll get that information um, from your authority about how many bandy equivalent properties that you've got in your parish or area. So one bandy property, the kind of one larger band, so back to H, I think is two, etc. But it will work it out and give you an amount that that works out per property in terms of the preset to see how that fits with what you've got. Obviously, if your boundary properties have changed quite significantly, if you've had a lot of building in the area, then you might find that your preset total has gone up quite considerably, but actually the overall amount per property hasn't changed greatly. And then obviously that would be absolutely fine given that you've got more um, properties in your area that you're now going to provide more services for. So therefore, obviously, you would expect the preset to rise. You may find that your preset amount seems to need to be vastly different to what it was before. So two things there, either does the budget need revisiting because something's wrong, you've either, if it's gone down massively, have you forgotten something? Have you missed an element out? If it's gone up a lot, is there something that you've put in that you didn't need to, that you've counted twice that you need to review? Or is it justifiable and needed? If previously you've taken a preset that actually didn't cover everything that you needed to want to do, is it now the point that you need to take to put it up or is it because you now do more than you used to? So if you were in a scenario where you now have taken on more responsibility that was previously covered by your district or borough um, authority, so you now do more grass cutting or you're now in charge of the bus shelters or the street lights or whatever it may be, is it actually appropriate now for, for it to go up? So there's some things to consider as you're working through that precept um, amount as you can come to the calculation point. And then just to finish off then at the end of today, so as I talked about monitoring the budget, I just want to mention that again, that obviously the ultimate goal 
initially here is to get that budget set so that you've got that preset amount and you've got that budget ready for April. And in many scenarios, once that's done, the focus is now going to then move on to year end and you're going to be bogged down and trying to get that agar finished, etc. And coming back to April, thinking, oh, here's my budget, let's go with this new one. But it's actually really important to keep monitoring the budget because the budget is there obviously to help you make informed decisions, help your councillors make informed decisions, but also understand what's happening with the spend. And as I said at the beginning, the more you understand the budget, the easier it then becomes next to when you come to set the budget, if you've got a better feel for what's, what's going on with it. So it is important to monitor those budgets versus actuals. To do that, a good cash book is really important, preferably based on the budget codes. I've seen so many times where councils have a really nice budget. They have a lovely budget sheet with each line itemised with the budget amount against them. But the issue is, is that then their cash book bears no resemblance to that at all. And it's not in line with the budget codes. And actually then trying to run a report or find some information about what is the spend against my budget actually then makes it really, really difficult to do because the cash book doesn't match up to the budget. So tr do try and make sure that you've got a good budget, have an equally good cash book in order to allow you to monitor spend against it. And also just to finish off, and I want to mention about keeping notes as well. So not only on the current budget, and what's going on in the sort of the year itself and actual spend because that's really helpful when you get to this point if you've noted things that maybe were one-off spend or things to be mindful of because you know xyz is going to change you're going to have a, a new area that needs to be grass cut for example all those things that you could note down as you go through the year itself when you get to this point they're going to be really helpful to refer to but also as you're going through the budget setting process for next year do make notes about things, particularly where the budget has changed for the new financial year, and particularly where if you've had maybe a draft that's then gone on to change again. So that if you do get to the point of April, and then there's questions or they've come back from, hang on a minute, why is the budget for this line X amount? What's happened to this? Or other departments or committees are saying, hang on a minute, I'm sure that wasn't the final agreed budget, et cetera, et cetera. You've got that final draft, that final version of your budget, along with notes as to how some of those figures were derived at. So that it's very clear about that. I've seen that so many times previously, or I've worked previously where people come along and question about why the budget is different to what they're expecting it to be. So do keep notes because it's such a helpful thing to have to refer to, particularly if you do it now and you don't look at it to April, it's very easy to forget the decisions that you made at that point and why you chose, you know, you went for that budget figure um, at that point. So that's everything I wanted to go through today for now then. So I'm just gonna stop sharing and hand back to Tracy.